Hi, I'm Brandywine curator Amanda Burden, and I'd like to share with you one of the pieces I like most in the collection, The Map by Henry C. Pitts. It's a drawing of an island done in fine black ink lines. If you look closely at the drawing, which is done on a sheet of paper roughly 11 by 14 inches, you will find clues to determining just what it is Pitts is mapping. We find points of interest, such as Rum Cove, Spyglass Hill, and Skeleton Island. Near the center of the map is a cross, or an X if you angle the map, with an inscription, Bulk of Treasure Here. There are two other X's on the map as well. The peaked mountains of the island blend with representations of evergreen trees. A stockaded dwelling labeled Blockhouse appears on the eastern side of the island. If you haven't already figured it out, you're looking at a map created as an illustration for Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, first published serially between 1881 and 1882, with a map hand-drawn by the author. Although N.C. Wyeth is the best-known illustrator of Treasure Island, he did not draw a map for his 1911 illustrated edition. The popular book has been reprinted many times, either featuring Stevenson's own hand-drawn map or one by another artist. Pitts created this map for Junior Deluxe Editions, published in 1954. Maps, of course, are important documents in and of themselves, but when they appear as illustrations in a book, they tell us as readers just how important geography is for the story. The often detailed accounts in the text are supplemented by maps to provide readers with a sense of space and place, in addition to the action of the narrative. One of my favorite examples are the end papers to A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh, where Ernest Howard Shepard drew a map of the Hundred Acre Woods. Reading the book while referencing a map such as this draws the reader even further into the story and opens the possibility of creating one's own adventure within the boundaries of the map.